Welcome back. Assuming that you've downloaded and installed your tracker software, when you first open it up you'll get a window that looks as follows on the screen. Now the first thing you want to do is open up the video that you've created or the one that's provided for you. There's two ways to do this. When you hit the file button you can open a file. That's the one you'd want to use if the video has already been created for you. Or you can import the video from your camera. Now since the video we're going to use for our demonstration is one that's already pre-made, I'm just going to go open file. And when I open file, the first thing I want to do is go and find it. And I had mine stored in a folder called Tracker Labs. The one I'm looking at is gravity. So I double click and it loads it up. Okay, now that we've zoomed in, let's make sure our video is working properly by hitting play. You have the usual features at the bottom of the screen for any video player. You've got a slider that controls the video at any location and time, and you've got your play button and your return button. And you can also step the video forward and back with these little step features on the right. But I'll play it first just to see if it's actually working properly, and we can see my amusement park carriage is going up the ramp. It turns around and comes back down the ramp, so it does look like it's working fine. Now what we want to do is scale our diagram. Now, in this particular video, I've said that the height of the entire screen is 102 meters. That's our scale. When you create your own video, what you want to do is have a known distance, could be a meter stick or your height, showing up in the actual video itself so you can scale accordingly. So when you hit scale, you go to this little icon on the top that says show, hide, or create calibration tools and you click on it. And we go new calibration stick and what it does is it makes a virtual little meter stick a hundred units long. Now I've said that the entire length of this coaster is 102 meters. So I take one end to the bottom and stretch the other end to the top as vertically as I can. and I call that distance 102 meters. So when I click right where it says 100 in the past, I can change it to any distance I want. I want it to be 102 and I just hit enter. So now my video is scaled. The next thing I want to do is figure out the starting and stopping point of my video. Crop it a little bit so I'm not collecting uh, excessive amounts of data. Now for this one, I want to focus on where the carriage is actually vertical. So I'll just use my slider and you can see the carriage moving along as I slide it back and forth. The vertical part of the track is right in this region. I don't want to use this curved part. We want to keep it simple. So if I step it forward just one little notch, that's a good starting location for my video. And you can see we're roughly on frame 20. 19 or 20 should be a good starting location. Now to set that as my starting location, I just right click on the slider, set start frame to slider 20. We're good to go. Now let's set our end frame. So I'll use my slider again, and we want this entire vertical region. So it's on its way down, and it basically ends about there on frame 80. So once again, I'll right click, set end frame to slider 80. And now we're good. And you can see we've got two little marks here to indicate where we're starting and finishing our analysis. And when I hit my reset to step zero button, it goes back to our starting point, the one we chose. We're almost ready to go. Now because we want to collect position and time data, it's ideal to have an origin. And I always like to put the origin at the start of the problem, where this cart or coaster is at the beginning. Here's how we select our origin. When I click on this little icon, it says show or hide the coordinate axis, this purple coordinate axis shows up. I can move it when I grab the dead center of it, anywhere I like, and I can even tilt it when I grab this little line and move it around. That becomes useful if you're doing analysis on things like ramps, um, anything that's just a little bit offset, or if your camera wasn't quite flush in the first place. You can angle it a little bit and get it nice and, nice and smooth. So I'll, first of all, I'm going to move my origin to the center of my cart, right at the starting location. And since the cart is basically going straight up and down, I don't have to worry about tilting it very much. You can see it does angle a little bit, so I suppose I could just ever so slightly tilt it so it lines up with the track. It's not going to make much difference. In fact, it's only 0.7 degrees, it says at the top. Now, I find that that coordinate axis, once it's set, we're good to go. 
but I find it gets in the way of me choosing data points. So I want to turn it off now. Any of these icons at the top, you can toggle them on and off in terms of viewing them just by clicking on them. So I'll click on it again, my origin vanishes. Notice if I click on my meter stick, it's gone as well. Click on it again, and it comes back. So let's just keep a clean slate here so we can track our card effectively.